nine. Now his first win as a CFL head coach last week. Going retro. <laughs> Look at that, huh? Well, there he that's is. a tribute to his dad. Yeah, Mike Kelly, his father, Jim Kelly, the head coach, Waterbury, Connecticut High School. Mike says, this is what I woke up to every Saturday morning as a kid was this look and so he's uh, he's embraced this retro thing and an opportunity to to obviously pay tribute to someone who's who's had a big impact on his career I'm surprised though that he would do something like that being such a conservative guy <laughs> that he is Fred Reed back Reed breaks one tackle and Stephon LaFour is in the Blue Bombers offense will come out Near the 38-yard line, Marcel Belfay got a little more traditional throwback look. There you see Marcel, who's worked hard. His biggest mission this year has been, you know, as he's, he's sporting this retro look, remembering the past in Hamilton, but his biggest mission with this Ticat team has kind of been forgetting the past and making this 2019 forge its own identity. The immediate past. That's I'm sure it. the last few seasons have been dreadful here in Hamilton. The fours behind center again. Miscommunication there with Fred Reed. And Otis Floyd, the hero last week in BC Place against his former team, the Lions. There you see just a little confusion in the backfield as the fours and Reed collide on that path. Fred Reed recovers well and is able to pick up some, some positive yardage. May seem like an elementary question, but having a left-handed quarterback, I don't know how many left-handed quarterbacks you ever played with or near. If it might pose a different challenge at times for some players. Uh, it could, but in, in terms of the running game, quarterbacks always have to hand off to both sides, so it shouldn't be a big issue. John Osterhaus out of the backfield. Brings it to the Hamilton 50-yard line, and that's where they'll use the big guy in a jumbo package like that. Well, and you can tell when you've got a, a guy like John Osterhaus who's primary role in this offense is clearly to be a blocking back a lot of times teams forget about him as a receiver watch how wide open he is here because he rarely releases from the backfield you gotta love the way he finishes though some guys look for daylight just try to run Osterhaus from the second he caught that football he's just looking for someone to hit this is a guy who also can play the d-line the fours barks out some signals into Hamilton territory the pitch again to Reed. Reed picks up a couple yards. You see that Hamilton defensive line. Garrett McIntyre makes his first start of the season in place of the injured Kahari Long. The linebacking core, the trio of former BC Lions who had a, a happy homecoming last week. Jamal Johnson, very quiet, 11 tackles in his, his first game of the season. On the back end, Jeff Tisdale coming off a huge game with that turning point for the Ticats last week, an interception return for a touchdown against BC. The fours, the scramble now, Stephon the fours goes forward, and with the spot, depending on this spot, they could be moving the sticks. It looks like a favorable spot for the fours, and it should be a first down. And with a little bit of pressure here from the Tiger Cat front, you see Stefan LaFour's demonstrating one of the strengths in his game, which is that ability to scramble. Doesn't see a receiver open downfield. Lane opens up and away he goes. Well, you always make the coach a little nervous when you slide head first, but that's a heads up play from LaFour's because going head first instead of giving himself up feet first, that's what got him the first down. Looks like the Bombers may have jumped there and there was no penalty flag an incomplete pass what a night here beautiful night for football but a great crowd here at Iverwind Stadium well it sure is it, certainly the the weather helps helps that walk-up crowd on game day but there's been a lot of buzz surrounding this game the lead up certainly the, the any spies game. In, any spies <laughs> in the crowd uh, no no doubt there are a few hiding out there I'm guessing they might be dressed a little bit more subtly than the last one who was caught here at Iverwind yeah not exactly undercover. Spygate dominating the headlines this week. The fours from the backfield. Reed can't run under it. It'll be third down. Of course, if you haven't been watching, Spygate 
a road scout was out at Iberwin Stadium earlier this week. On watching this play, you have to wonder a little bit if maybe Markeith Knowlton was spying on the Bombers. Watch how quickly he reacts to Fred Reed trying to sneak out of the backfield. That's what forces the high throw from Stefan LaForce. They anticipated Knowlton was going to come hard upfield on the pass rush, and they could just lob it over his head. But a nice reaction from the Tiger Cats' strong side linebacker. Alexis Cerna, two for four so far this season. This kick will come from the 47-yard line. Oh, it's a fake. The force throws it. And short of the first down. Real Johnson in on the play to make the catch. Almost worked. But the tie cats take over. Earlier today at Mosaic Stadium. Battle of the undefeated. The Alouettes go to 3 0. 3 0 on the board here for the Tie Cats. Take over on downs after the fake field goal. Almost worked for Winnipeg. Out of the backfield. That doesn't work. Dave Stalla. Little pitch from Quinton Porter. Um, we're going to take a look back a minute ago at the fake run by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. You're going to see Real Johnson is going to sneak from that inside wing position all the way across the back of the formation, hoping that anybody covering him would have to come from the far side of the field. The Bombers are able to complete that pass. A good reaction from Jamal Johnson prevents him from picking up first down yardage. Second and ten, Porter. And caught in traffic. Riche Rodriguez, last year's Eastern Rookie of the Year, certainly made a name for himself, not only in Hamilton, but across the Canadian Football League. Well, and this is a heck of a throw from Quinton Porter to thread it through traffic, but look at the way Rodriguez uses his body to shield the defender, shield the ball away from the defender, Javon Johnson here. Rodriguez at six foot five, 210 pounds, has a big advantage over a lot of the DBs who are covering him out on the corner. And there you saw how he used his size to protect the football. Cobb, nowhere to go inside, and you can bet that Winnipeg's been looking at a lot of number 14 on tape this week. The Minister of Defense, Baron Simpson, came into the game with the uh, league-leading 14 tackles. Baron Simpson in what appears to me to be the best shape of his career coming into this you season. Think? Oh, after, oh, man. <laughs> after, see him down there? Unbelievable. After missing most of last season due to injury, Looks a little bit lighter, a little bit quicker. A little bit meaner, too. Like, he, he wants <laughs> to get it on. But an hour before game time, he says, come on, let's get it going. Six pack of receivers, pump fake. Porter goes over the middle and almost picked off. Chris Davis got a hand on it. But the Blue Bombers, Ian Logan, the free safety, was in the vicinity. Well, Quinton Porter's got a couple of giants in his receiving core, and Prichet Rodriguez and Chris Bauman. Unfortunately, he throws the, the high ball to the smurf of the bunch, Chris Davis at 5'10". Again, pretty good protection from that Hamilton offensive line. But good coverage from the Winnipeg secondary. Seta. Bounces away, and... To the goal line. And look at this. A broken play. And James Johnson brings it out past the 20 yard line. Well, James Johnson salvaged a little something with a, a decent run back there because he was certainly in some hot water with his coaches for letting that ball bounce. Seems like we say this every week, but returners, if you can catch the ball in the air, you catch it in the air. He came close to touching it just before he that. He sure did. That certainly took a, a Tiger Cat bounce to settle down right around the goal line without going into the end zone. All-star hunter, Nick Seta. First couple of games was bothered by a bad back, but he's all right now. And Andre Pru is our head referee tonight. One of our officials are down. Let's uh, finish off the Spygate story. Again, uh, apparently an advanced scout um, working 
I guess ostensibly for Winnipeg, although the Blue Bombers say he wasn't, was caught in the stands at an open workout earlier this week. And then the uh, Hamilton Tiger Cat Brass saw him and took his notes, and he was uh, trying to steal some plays. Yeah, Ron Trentini, the gentleman's name, and his role with the Bombers in the past has been as a, a personnel scout, scouting college players, particularly Canadian university players for Winnipeg. So not a guy who typically is, is advanced scouting upcoming opponents. Apparently took it upon himself to come and watch practice and, and make a few notes. I guess he didn't think he was doing anything wrong. Again, the Blue Bombers uh, also felt that, you know, it was unsolicited by them. Marcel Belfe and the Hamilton Tiger Cats felt otherwise. And, you know, this stuff has gone on in the past, this uh, spying, or I guess you might say cheating. We've seen it with videotape. Bill Belichick, of course. Uh, Don Matthews was accused of it uh, and, and, and made no bones about it. Said, hey, we want to win. There's, there is no rule against it. Well, this is the big challenge as you, you see the, uh, the homemade. The cam. Yeah, there's the, the Steel Town version of, a, of the spy cam. Great costume, by the way. But yeah, again, apparently Trentini didn't didn't feel he was doing anything wrong, and the CFL doesn't have any rules technically. There is nothing in writing preventing him from attending what was an open practice, and the CFL likes the policy of teams having open practices as part of that accessibility for media and fans. Something but, you don't see very often. Uh, an official going off the field. We wish Al McCollman, the field judge, well. Got injured on that play. Dangers of the job, boy. These guys, at times, don't get paid enough. <laughs> right no, in the right. line of fire. So true. So true. The only guys down there in the mix without even so much as a helmet. So the Bombers, their 16-yard line. And Reed. Just over a minute and a half to go before the conclusion of this first quarter. Well, you see Jamal Johnson come up from that one, slapping his helmet. He missed a, a tackle on Fred Reed right in the hole. You're going to see Reed bend this one all the way back to the right as the cutback lane opens up. Starts off to the right, sees an opening on the left. Jamal Johnson stepped up to fill, but was unable to wrap Reed up, and that allowed the Bombers back to pick up a couple of extra yards on the play. Reed's been bothered by a wonky ankle this week, showing no signs tonight. The fours. Robbie Bryant has it. Knocked out of bounds in a first down for Winnipeg. Robbie Bryant working against Chris Thompson in man-to-man -man coverage. See those crossing routes where it's which are terrific against men because you're just running through traffic and outrunning a guy across the field. Romby Bryant has such good speed, he's able to get open without really making any sort of move. First down from the Winnipeg 35. Reed again tries to find a lane. And all he finds are cat jerseys. That was Garrett McIntyre stepping up to make the play. Newcomer to the line this week. He gets the ball deep. This little stutter step as he looks for something to open up. But Garrett McIntyre out of Fresno State. One time Western Athletic Conference Defensive Player of the Year at Fresno. Looking to make his mark here in the CFL. Could be the final play of this first quarter. LaFour's in trouble, escapes, and will be short of the first down. What a victory for the Hamilton Tiger Cats in this first quarter. They have had horrible first quarters in the preseason and in the regular season. And they did not give up a point. No, and we saw what a difference it made for Hamilton last week after being down through the preseason, giving up 20 points in the preseason, first week of the season before they were able to score. We saw what a difference it made last week, just being able to keep the game close in the early going against BC. It seemed to really help their confidence. So you can imagine the Tiger Cats are feeling pretty good to have any kind of lead after a quarter here. That is the end of the first quarter. Only a Knicks set a field goal on the board so far. 
60s night in Hamilton will continue.